Thank you. Oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Word camps are awesome, right? To me, it's, I get so pumped up being at WordCamp because you're around, just look around, there's so much talent in the room and at every building, you'll, you'll be able to do what you want to do with WordPress. If you're interested in meeting people, in networking, this is a place. If you're here to learn about a topic, this is the place. So for the next two days, I want you to get out there and get into it. I'm gonna tell you my story today What I usually do when I come to a work camp, it's like going to an amusement park. I try to map out um, all the sessions I want to go to so I don't miss anything. And then, if you need to contact me, I'm at Joe Simpson Jr. Anywhere, social media, on the web, email, just look up Joe Simpson Jr. I'll also make my slides available at the URL you see here. Uh, don't worry about writing it down right now, but it'll be at the end of the slide deck as well. June 19th, 2017, at about 10 o'clock in the morning, 350 days ago, I was laid out flat on an operating table similar to the one you see here. I was being poked, prepped, and prodded for a procedure. Now, the strangest thing, as I counted sheep counting backwards from 100, 99, 98, 97, as I slowly dozed off, the last thoughts leading to that moment, and all I could think of leading to that moment were, you know, those commercials. You know the ones. There's a woman with her puppy, freshly shampooed, and she's singing, the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow Or the grandpa, they're prancing down the street, his two grandkids dancing around him as they head for the school bus in the morning. Or there's a family at a resort in some exotic location with an infinity pool looking out over the Pacific Ocean, having a great time. But I'm sure you've all seen the one where there's an adult couple basking in the glow, the afterglow of love in his and her tubs looking out over the Pacific Ocean, peaceful and tranquil. Now what you don't see in all that joy and contentment on the top of the screen is the small text at the bottom of the screen with a voice that reads it very, very, very rapidly in a tone that you can't really understand, the risks and potential factors for those prescriptions. Now what you see at the bottom of the screen here are my risks for the procedure that I was about to undergo. And usually, Procedures like mine have death, 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 heart attack, aneurysm. So as I dozed off, that was on my mind. It all started for me five years ago. I would leave the 19th floor office at Union Station, head down the lift, the escalator into the East Portal at Union Station. And by the time I got to the 12th step, of the third platform on the northbound Antelope Valley line, I would be doubled over, wiped out, as if I just ran a marathon or played a football game, but it was only 250 steps. I also went to London during that time. I was fortunate enough to save up. I'm a Detroit Lions fan, unfortunately, and I had saved up money to go to an NFL London game, and I found myself uh, in a station at Leicester Station, which is probably, it's the second, I think it's the second deepest station in London. So imagine me trying to rush through a crowd miles deep under the station. And in London, everybody walks. In Europe, everywhere you go, you have to walk for the most part. I had to stop every couple of minutes. And all that could run through my mind I was, was the fear of possibly dying in a station. I didn't have access to my friend because in the station we didn't have service. So I was 3,000 miles away and I was like, wow, I'm gonna die down here. So when I got back home, I went to my doctor. And bless his heart, he tried everything. 
We checked my blood. We checked my urine. We checked testosterone. We did EKGs. We did stress, stress, stress tests, treadmill tests, stress treadmill tests, but nothing worked. Over the next five years, I think he was skeptical. I don't think he believed that something was wrong with me, but deep inside, I knew something was seriously wrong. So about a year ago in April, I found myself in his doctor's office on the stress treadmill again, but this time, my test immediately went positive. They took me off of the treadmill, set me down, and he said, I'm gonna refer you to the cardiologist. Now, two weeks before the procedure, I had the toughest day of my life. Um, my daughter is, was a junior at the time, and she was finishing high school. My wife and I, we decided we wouldn't tell her until after she had taken her finals because we didn't want to upset her. She was taking her college prep test, and we didn't want to distract her. But that evening when I got home, my son was here, my wife was here, and my daughter was directly ahead of me. And all I could think of at that point was that kitchen table. We had raised our kids at that table. When I get home from work, the first faces I saw eating dinner were these faces. And there was actually a moment burned in my mind where I would pick up my daughter and put her on the kitchen table. And I would say, hey, we're the same height. And she would jump into my arms. And at that moment, it became clear as I told her, I might not be coming home anymore. The great philosopher Mike Tyson once said, it's great to have a game plan until someone punches you in the mouth. As I woke up, I heard my cardiologist say, Joe, we've got news for you. You don't have one, but two 100% blocked arteries in your heart. Now, what they did, they did a cardiac catheterization. What that means is they inserted a catheter in through my hip, up through my artery to my heart, and they inflated a balloon, which left behind a stent. That immediately opened up the artery and restored blood flow. That was on the supply side, which is the most critical part in your heart. On the return side, it was a little more difficult. It was in a difficult spot to get to, and they decided not to do anything because your heart is an amazing organ. To compensate for the fact that I didn't have blood returning to my heart as it did, as it should, it sprouted auxiliary pathways to return the blood. So he felt that with a little bit of medicine and, car and cardio rehab, it would take care of itself. For me, as I left the hospital, it felt like a pack of elephants had run me over. I was in shambles. Imagine getting out of the bed in the morning and, or getting out of a seat too quickly and fainting. If I cut myself, I was on blood thinners and I would just bleed profusely. Or if someone tapped me on the arm too hard, I would get a bruise. I also have a reminder every day since that one heartbeat could be something critical for me. So I had to change. And this quote came to mind. If today was the last day of my life, what, I, what would I want to do today? And whenever the answer was no, too many times in a row, I know I had to change something. So I knew deep inside I had to change something. Now, how many of you do exactly what you want to do every day and do something that you love? For me, the last time I can remember doing that was when I had a great hairdo like this. It was a hairdo like Snoop Dogg, a nice perm. And I would get up in the morning, I would run out of the house, uh, go play for a while, come in and eat, go play for a while, come in, draw a little bit. I would be totally free. But all of us now, we have commitments, we have family, jobs, we have to make ends meet. So a lot of the joy that we once had when we were free, we no longer have. So I decided after talking with one of my mentors, he, he's in New York, he's a really good friend of mine, he said, Joe, you've been working for a long time. You've been dedicated to the work that you've done. You should take some time off. You should take a leave. And in the back of my mind, I'd already been thinking about doing that, 
But I was thinking, hey, I got something in the office. I can't leave people behind. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. I decided to take a leave of absence. And I said, when I'm on a leave of absence, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. I'm going to do nothing but focus on getting, getting well and healing my heart. Now, you may be wondering, what the heck does this have to do with WordPress? I didn't come for a health speech, a motivation speech. But today, I'm going to tell you about my journey in the WordPress community. I decided during that leave of absence, which was 90 days, that I was going to really live. I was going to do the things that I love to do. When I was young, I was an, a budding artist. I loved to draw. I loved to animate. I went to school for that. I was a graphic designer. I turned a web designer. So I was going to draw every day. I was going to pick up a pencil or a stylus and sketch every single day. In addition to that, I was going to focus on getting healthy. I was going to start a cardio rehab program for the three months. And so every day I was going to work out to try to get back in the shape. And also, I loved WordPress. So every day I was going to try to do something in WordPress. And those are my 90 days. I started in WordPress maybe 10 years ago. Um, I had a lead designer and uh, our CSS goddess. They left the company. And so I inherited a WordPress theme, and we had to move it off onto a host and find support for it. At the time, being a government employee, we had budget. And as you know, with government agency, budgets come and go. And we had the budget to host somewhere, and I decided on WordPress VIP. For those who haven't heard of WordPress VIP, it's an enterprise solution for WordPress by the people that made WordPress automatic. These are some of the companies that they host. The, the th great thing about WordPress VIP was that it immediately taught me a couple of things that I would always use. I had to become disciplined. WordPress has a lot of enterprise level Fortune 500 companies, and their sites can't go down. So they're very restrictive in terms of what plugins you can use and how clean your code is. So I immediately learned how to write clean code. We also had budget for me to do a little bit of training. So they sent me up to the WordPress VIP intensive training in Napa Valley. And the great thing about that, it was my first exposure to the WordPress community. For me, being a designer turned front end wannabe, um, I had no development experience. And when I got up to Napa, it was amazing. No one made me feel stupid. Every question that I had, someone took the time to answer it. Matt was there. All the, the top people in the core were there, and they were all accessible. And they were all friendly. I was like, wow, this is a lot different. Because sometimes in the office, people fight over projects, or this is mine, this is mine. But my first experience in the WordPress, com WordPress community was totally different. And it was awesome. We also had budget. I went up to a town hall at Automatic in San Francisco. And that was the first place that I heard about WordCamps. So I decided that fall I would go to WordCamp Los Angeles. This is a definition of community because professionally and personally, I need a community to survive. I had a lot of difficult days. I cried a lot as I tried to rebuild my life. And it's always great that when you're down, someone's there for you to answer a question or steady your arm by holding your elbow. So I decided from that point on, in my 90 days, I was going to do these three things consistently. I was going to reboot. I had to start over, like I said. I had no stamina. I had no energy. I had to rebuild my heart. I wanted to give back. I felt an incredible urge to want to do for others. And so I was going to set out to do that. And finally, in WordPress, I wanted to level up. I knew some things. I managed a blog network during the day. But I really wanted to learn some things about WordPress that I didn't know. So on September 11th, I started my cardio rehab at Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital in Valencia, which is in northern Los Angeles County. The program was pretty intense. One of the days a week, we, we did education. We learned about health, diet, exercise, doing things the right way. But the great thing about it was there was a community of folks that were going through the exact same thing as me, and we all moved through the program together. We all helped each other, and we all motivated each other which is the same thing in the WordPress community. I listened to a sports doctor on the radio, and he has a lot of great quotes. And this quote 
was really appropriate to what I was going through. I had to live in the moment. If I pushed too hard, my body would tell me, hey, sit down, or I might pass out. So I always had to be present in the moment. And his quote was, the nose of your board is a, is a future. The tail of your board is a past. The surfer stands in the middle and lives in the moment and reacts to whatever comes his way. And I decided I really had to be present. And that was something that we all don't do enough of. We're always thinking about the next project instead of focusing on today. Each day when I wasn't in rehab, I would go to each, every park in the area. I think I walked every single park in Santa Clarita and get some road work in. I was really focused on that. In addition, like I mentioned, I was gonna do WordPress. I was gonna pick up my stylus or pencil every day. As I began to get stronger, the first 10 steps turned into 20. 20 turned into 40. And one day, I find myself standing at this place in Santa Clarita. This is Central Park. And this hill is about 900 feet high from bottom to top. So why would someone with a heart event seek to do something like this? I decided I was going to climb this hill again. I had done it when my kids were playing soccer maybe five, 10 years ago. And I said, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to level up. So I set out on doing that. And this quote came to mind. Michael Jordan, when he was asked, how did you average 30 points a season over a 10-year period? He said, you know, if you think about 30 points a game, that's a, quite a big task. But if you break it down into small chunks, maybe eight points a quarter, it's not too big a goal to accomplish. So I decided to climb that hill, I was going to have to break it down into small chunks. I also wanted to give back. For me, family is very important. And I decided the first place I can give back was with my brother. My brother runs a printing company, and he had a website. Now, what you see here is his former website. For one reason or another, we didn't work together on it. Maybe he felt I was too busy. I was always too busy. And what you see here, imagine those four quadrants being one long page. He decided to go overseas, get something cheap, and this is what he ended up with, a broken WordPress website. It hadn't been updated in years. It was blacklisted. It had so many problems. And so for his birthday, I decided to do a site and rebrand his, his company for him as a way to give back. This was the theme that he used. As you can see, there's no description. It's by Anonymous. He grabbed it off the internet somewhere, which is the ultimate no-no. So, I, so I, just, I picked up my pencil, and I started to sketch. I thought, you're a printing company. What about your logo says you're a printing company? It was nothing. It was like a t-shirt with some, some typography on it that he just made himself. So I started sketching, and I thought, you think RGB, you think CMYK when you think printing. And these are the iterations of the logo. And we finally settled on the one in the lower right. For his website, I'd been using um, array themes, and I decided on Atomic. They're pretty stable. Um, and I came up with this uh, for his website. I also wanted to level up. I wanted to do something with WordPress I hadn't really done. And I find four, uh, search pages or 404 pages are pretty basic. They really don't assist in the user experience, in my opinion. So I decided, in addition to the search box, we'd also put some quick links to some of the products that he wanted to push that were, and place them on the page there prominently so you can directly jump into there. They may answer some of your common questions as well before you even hit the search. So I did that. I wanted to level up. Now, I was always too busy, like I mentioned. And when I would leave work, I would say, I'm too tired to go to a meetup. And I made any excuse I could to not do a meetup. I'd always wanted to do a WordPress meetup. So during these 90 days, I said, I'm going to go to a meetup. And so for the next 90 days, I tried to go to every meetup in Southern California. That's crazy, but I had time. I did Los Angeles. I did Riverside. I did Palmdale, Newhall. I did every meetup you could imagine. 
I did official meetups and non-official meetups. I don't know if you know that there's a distinction. The, the Newhall meetup, for example, wasn't an official WordPress meetup that I would come to find out later. This is uh, one of the locations for downtown Los Angeles. Downtown is great. And if you're in that area, you should check it out because they always do it in a cool space. This is a co-working space downtown with an awesome chandelier. They also hosted at, uh, DreamHost had us a couple of times. And so it was on the 50th floor of the Aon building. So imagine talking WordPress, networking with other people that are interested in WordPress in such a cool environment. The other thing that was great about the downtown meetup was it was presentation based, like a word camp. So each meetup, there would be someone talking about a specific topic. In the very first meetup that I went to, he talked about search engine optimization, Arsen Rabinovich, and it was pretty awesome. So that got me going. I was like, wow, I enjoy this. I then went to the Pasadena meetup, and Alex Vasquez, the gentleman who said, hey, maybe you should talk at a WordPress one day, that's his meetup. And they had a, double, a couple of flavors. They had a beginner's level and a developer level. And I see some folks from Pasadena here. Uh, the great thing about Alex's meetup is that if you know Alex, he has a great sense of humor. So it's a different vibe. It's not as serious. Um, and it's also, it's, it's also like being in a lecture on a college campus. He calls on folks to talk about WordPress or answer questions as they talk about their information. I was like, that's a nice twist also. So as a fly on the wall, I would just talk to folks and see what things were what things they were, uh, what they felt was important in WordPress. I met Saeed there, as a matter of fact. Then I went to the Whittier meetup, and this again was a different experience altogether. They had uh, cameras going, and they videotaped everything. So they were Facebook Live in it. They were talking about page builders, and and Jason has a great WordPress uh, blog, uh, podcast called WP Blab. So if you're into WordPress and you want to know more that you can, like for me, when I'm at work, I'm always listening to podcasts. And that's a great way to get WordPress as well. I then came down to Orange County. The great thing about Steve's uh, meetups is they have multiple flavors. They have a designer. They have a business. They have general, advanced. They also have uh, what's a great movement right now, the women in WordPress. Movement. So depending on what you want to do in a meetup, there's one for you. There's one close, there's one far. Depends on what you want to do with it. I also went out to Riverside, and I met various at that very first WordCamp. And what I was so impressed with with various is his energy level. If you've met various, he's excited. He's genuinely excited about WordPress. So I was like, wow, I could draft off of this guy. If I could have just a bit of that energy, that can get me through. And theirs was great as well. They had multiple flavors also. Now, if you don't know about WordPress in your area, if there's a WordPress meetup or not, you can go to your dashboard. In the core update for 4.8, they added it. There's a WordPress events and news dashboard uh, panel that pops up. And if you click on the pencil, and enter the city, it'll update based on your location. Now, the great thing about this is when I'm traveling, I enter the city that I'm traveling to. So last fall, I decided to go to East Lansing. I usually go in the spring and fall to move my son out of college into storage before I come back home. So I said, hey, let's see what's going on in WordPress in that area. And I saw there's WordCamp Detroit, WordCamp Chicago, and I applied to speak. So it's a great way if you're traveling to do meetups. I did more meetups. Pasadena, Los Angeles. I also did a couple of word camps during that time. Riverside, Los Angeles. I racked up miles. I also did word camp Grand Rapids during that time. I was racking up miles like crazy, but it was fun. I didn't have to worry about work. I didn't have to worry about home. I was just getting healthy. So when I got done walking, I would do WordPress. Now, WordCamps are also another great way to get involved with the WordPress community. There's a URL. It's also in that dashboard that I showed you. That'll show you where WordCamps are happening every, every week, everywhere in the world. 
So I suggest if you, if, you're, if you like what you're doing today at this word camp, go to other word camps. In this area, there's four, San Diego, Riverside, uh, Los Angeles, and Orange County. What I did during that time, which was also cool about the community, was I decided not to go as an attendee, but to volunteer. And I volunteered for Word Camp Los Angeles last fall. I met a couple of folks that are on the Orange County organizing team, Sherilyn and Priscilla. And the incredible thing about volunteering is it gives you a different perspective on Word Camp, on WordPress. When you're an attendee, you're following your schedule, doing the things that you want to do. But when you're volunteering, you're doing for others. I worked at the, the front table, the registration desk. So every person that came to Los Angeles that year, I said hi to. I shook their hand. I found out their story. And what was, what's great to me about community is that you share stories. You hear that we're all sort of on a common path. If there's something that you're doing that I want to do, I want to listen, or vice versa. That's what's so incredible about the WordCamp experience. This was Grand Rapids. The cool thing about Grand Rapids was it's a beautiful city. There's an incredible river that runs through the town. But also my college roommate was there. And there was also a presentation on changing from a freelancer to running your own business. Jesse Gers doing one in the Venture conference room right now. And I met her in Chicago. And it's incredible to see that transition from doing freelance work to having your own company. So again, I was picking up things and putting them in my own personal database. During that time also, I wanted to go to WordCamp US, but I couldn't afford to, and it was during a time when I couldn't schedule it. But many of you may not know that you can go to WordCamp US without going. They have a live stream, which was an incredible experience also. So in the lower right-hand corner is my man cave, or she shack, or whatever you want to call it. And I signed up for a live stream ticket, and you get to go to all the conferences from the, co the comfort of your living room. Morton Rand Hendrickson was there. He's uh, pretty outspoken about Gutenberg and other uh, matters in WordCamp. And he's a, a great resource in terms of learning WordPress on lynda.com. There was an also awesome speech by Matt on the state of WordPress and Gutenberg, and one of the core members, a few of the core members got up and talked about Gutenberg and did a live demo and took questions. So that was awesome. They're always accessible, always there to answer questions. Now, I had put in a lot of word, road work. And as you can see, the miles were starting to add up. And so I found myself on one of the interstate freeways in Southern California at 1047 at night driving back home, trying to drink coffee, spilling it on my lap. And I said, you know what? If I was in Santa Clarita at a meetup, I would be home by now and probably in bed. So at that particular moment, I decided to start a meetup in Santa Clarita. How many of you know where Santa Clarita is? The funny thing is, when I tell people, when I went to the other meetups and said, hey, why don't you come up to Santa Clarita? People seem to think it's in Northern California. They, they confuse it with Santa Clara. But we're on the I-5 North. If you're driving up to San Francisco, we're near Magic Mountain. So come out and see us. If you want to start a meetup yourself, there's makewordpress.org. And there's an interest form that you fill out. And I worked with Courtney, who I see here, to get started. And there's a process that you go through to become an official WordPress meetup. And as usual, she was awesome in the process. We did a Zoom meeting. There was some Q&A that I had to, um, to answer. Um, and we started our meetup in January. I grabbed my pencil, and I came up with this. This is our logo for the meetup in Santa Clarita. We've been going since January. We have two flavors, which I got from taking in the other meetups. There's our weekly meetup, which is for professionals that want to talk shop. And then on Saturday is when we give back. Again, I want to make sure to always give back. And we do a hands-on workshop for people that have WordPress questions or they have a website and they need help. So we started that. It's going great. And this is us on Meetup. So uh, these are some examples of what we've done so far. We've talked Gutenberg. 
we've done a lot of WordPress building. So with the show of hands, one thing that I always find out, find interesting is people that have come to a WordCamp that have never heard of a meetup. How many people have been to a meetup? How many people? So obviously a lot of people have been to both. But I'm always surprised that people who come to our meetups haven't heard of one or the other. So it's always part of my DNA or in my DNA to tell them about one or the other. If you want to get involved with WordPress, and this is a great thing about an open source project, depending on what you want to do, there's a place for you. I don't know if you've been to makewordpress.org, but when you go to the page, you'll see something like this, and there's all the different areas that you can get involved in in WordPress. So if you're a designer, if you're into accessibility, if you want to help with Gutenberg, there's teams that you can volunteer for, and they have meetings, and they manage projects. You'll see more information about the particular meetups in the right-hand portion of the page in the sidebar here. And once you sign up, you'll be invited to Slack. So for example, everyone that's helping with WordPress Orange County today, we've all been invited to the meetup, and we share information there. And it's a great way to work on projects. And this is an example of the page here. There's different channels. So depending on what channel you've been invited to, that's what you'll see. And finally, I don't know if many of you know that today's events are being recorded. And they're going to be on WordPress TV. WordPress TV is another way to get information about WordPress. There, all of these sessions will be there. So for example, if you're, this is how the page looks. So if you wanted to see Orange County, come back in a couple of weeks or maybe a month, put in Orange County in the search box, and it'll show all the videos that have happened at this particular WordCamp since they've been recording it. So it's a great way if you miss a certain topic today. So for example, I miss Jesse's. And, I, and, to, and when we were in Chicago, we both spoke together. She did a great speech, but I'm not going to see it today. I can go on WordPress TV in a couple of weeks and see it. If there's something in accessibility I want to find out about, I'm at a government agency, and that's a big topic. I can go there and take a look at it. So I would recommend if you miss something today, go to WordPress TV and check it out. Also, while I was home, I found out about WAPUs. How many of you know what a WAPU is? When Matt was traveling to Japan, they wanted to do something to represent WordPress in Japan. He worked with an illustrator who came up with this. They have an outpost where people can create WAPUs for. And they're usually for word camps or special events. And I decided to pick up my pencil. These are some examples of other WAPUs that are out in the environment. And Santa Carita is known for a couple of things. We have an amusement park. And at one time, pronghorn antelopes roam the valley. So I came up with this hybrid. It's an antelope in an amusement park ride car. And if we have a WordCamp one day, maybe we'll be able to release them into the wild. This quote is very important to me because it's sort of what drives me every day. I always try to live as if I were going to die tomorrow, because I could possibly die tomorrow. But I always want to learn as if I want to live forever. This is Central Park from the top. I reached the top in November a couple of months after I started cardio rehab. It was difficult. I had to break the, the trip down into four stop points. It was funny because people would look at me weird because I would stop at the first stop and I would stretch, look at my Fitbit, and little kids would be going up the hill. And then once my heart rate settled back down, I would start again, go to the second place, stop, stretch. But eventually I made it to the top. Since that point, I think I've been to the top 12 times, which is awesome. This is my support group. These folks are in the aftercare program at the hospital, and we always still get together. We're always there to share stories and keep each other motivated about staying healthy. We've had an event at the hospital. They do an annual event where they invite all the, the former heart patients in, and we share hugs, smiles, tears, and keep this thing going. 
So what has the next 90 days been like for me? I've been pretty healthy in recovery. I've lost about 35 pounds. I do about 15,000 steps a week. And it's funny because if I see a Fitbit on your arm, and Leanne, my coworker, could tell you, I'll say, hey, how many steps you got? So I'm always looking to keep it going. I've attended more word camps. As I mentioned, I've been to Chicago, San Diego. I'm here at Orange County. And I'm going to keep doing word camps as much as possible. I wanted to become a speaker. And I mentioned when I went back to move my son into Michigan State, I, went to, I sent in a, a speech submission for Chicago, and I was accepted. And I did this particular speech there a couple of months ago. I started our meetup, like I mentioned. Here are some images from WordCamp Chicago and some of the feedback. And it was pretty cool to see that I opened up and I shared something that was really personal and it connected. Again, community. That's what WordPress is about. This was the after party. And the cool thing is, if, if you hadn't been to an after party, I would recommend you go. It's usually in a very, very, very informal setting. So you don't have to be you know, Mr. Businessman or Mrs. Businessman, woman. You'll just be there talking shop. The gentleman in the, lo on the lower right uh, is pretty, pretty big in podcasting in the Midwest. And so we shared a lot of stories about starting up podcasts. In the background, there's someone, one of the sponsors. And they, everybody was available. So you could, if you had questions or you wanted to talk shop, it was all there for you. Or if you wanted to play ping pong, that was good too. Also, I want to build a theme. If you're like me, there's projects that you always want to do that are half finished, three quarters finished. And I have a theme that's almost there that I want to finish. So in my next 90 days, I want to do that. And I want to get it on the repository. I don't want to have it found on Google, like my brother's theme. I want to level up in Gutenberg. We all know the Gutenberg is coming. And I want to build a Gutenberg block. And finally, I want to have a word camp in Santa Clarita. So if you see me around the next two days, I'm going to be bugging the people in the purple shirts, asking questions. Because it would be great to have folks up in our area to enjoy word camp. Our meetup is here at WordPress SCV. You can find us on all of these networks. Again, I'm Joe Simpson, Jr. If you see me over the next two days, stop by and say hi, share a story. Don't pat me on the shoulder too hard. I might bruise. Here's my slide deck. Thanks very much. And I'll open it up to questions. Big round of applause for Joe. We've got time for maybe one or two questions. Does anybody have a question? Here you go, sir. Yeah. You, uh, you mentioned the difference between like a, a formal meetup and an informal meetup. Uh, yes. You didn't kind of elaborate on that. What's, sure. Could you have a meetup that's not registered as a meetup? Thank sure. Thank you. Sure, the so, question was, so the, what's the difference between an official and a non-official WordPress meetup? There's a quick way to find out. If you're on Meetup and you do a search for WordPress, for example, you'll see the WordPress logo, sponsored by, and that's the way you know it's official. For example, when I first went to a Meetup in our area, it was an SEO WordPress Meetup, but it didn't have a logo. And when I started to inquire about having a Meetup in our area, I found out that it wasn't official because it didn't have the logo. So. so It's an official WordPress meetup. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, another round of, oh, one more question here. When you had said you learned the uh, coding part, did you have a background in that, or is it kind of like you just dug in and found out on your own? Well, I started as, the question was how did, I start to code or learn to code. Was I always technically adept? The answer is no. Yeah, I started as a graphic designer. I majored in graphic design in college. But I always loved tech stuff. I was an animator, so I learned Flash. And in Flash, they had action script. So I started to dabble in a little bit. And then if you start to build web pages, you start in HTML. 
And then when I found out PHP was behind the scenes in WordPress and that it was sort of easy to learn, or I shouldn't say easy, but there's a pathway to learning that if you put in the effort, it can happen. So that's how it happened. Thank you. Thank you again, Joe. Right. Big round of applause. Thanks, folks.